Hey, this is Ryan. And this is Steve, and you are listening to 60 Cycle Hum, the guitar, buying, selling, trading, modding, fixing, breaking, reviewing, playing podcast. Another solid delivery, Steve. You did it. Yeah. And we're drinking beer sent to us from uh, Grant Wilson of Big Ear NYC. Yes, this is uh, La Vermontois. Sounds it's fancy. Uh, Blagier Hill Farmstead uh, from the Hill Farmstead Brewery um, located somewhere. It smells very nice. In Belgium. Mm. All right. It's got a good like wheat beer flavor. Um, so we're going to start That's this nice. episode off. We don't have anything new, but we were asked to... Well, kinda I kind of have something new. This episode may or may not get cut off at some point because my wife is almost certainly going into labor right now. And well, it's not going to get cut off. You just might leave and I'll I just, just finish by leave. myself. That's true. You could... That would be very interesting if Steve just did the show by himself. I know how to hit stop. <laughs> Who are you going to banter with? Nobody. You're just going to sit here and describe the ads and the topics by yourself? I mean, I do, I mean, most I guess, of, I do almost all the reading already, so. I, that's true. That's true. <laughs> but yeah, my wife is there. She has gone over to my family's to have dinner while we're recording this, and she texted me like a minute ago, like, we might be going to the hospital after I have dinner. So we'll see how long this episode actually nice. ends up being. All Let's right. get into it then, well, since who knows what's going to happen. It's not how long will it be, it's how long will you be here. This, okay. Steve this, is epi- insist- Steve this, epi- this episode has started. It will finish. Steve is insisting that he can carry the show by himself. I am looking forward to if that can actually happen. Oh, yeah. Uh, so I'm m- looking forward to editing this this video, Steve, of fun. you sitting here alone talking, talking to a camera by yourself. Um, so anyway, Mike Coppin sent this in. He said, what what you wish... The question, because we did call for topics. We're doing this in lieu of doing what's new. Yeah, as he said, what you wish you had named the podcast unless you legit love the name. Just thinking of Foo Fighters where Dave Grohl always says he wished, uh, he wishes he had used a different name. Uh, do you ever think like that we should have gone with a different name? I th- I like our name because it's unique in this scene of guitar podcasts, YouTube channels or whatever, because it's not like guitar guys or like, or like, gear boys or something like that or you know like it doesn't have it doesn't overtly have a guitar thing in yeah it. like yeah. you kind of have to know about guitar stuff to get the reference but then it's also like hard to tell people because there's so many s's in it it's like 60 cycle hum guitar yeah. podcasts like when i'm doing videos i wish that i had a name that didn't have so many s's in it and it's also like I tell it to people and I wonder, like, do they get the reference? Like, do they understand any of the words I just said? Right. And I think guitar people, like people, I wouldn't even say guitar people get it. I think guitar, people who are on our level get it. Studio, studio people. Hate it. Hate it. They're like, ooh, why would you name it that? I'm always trying to get rid of that. Yeah. But for, I always like it because it's part of your guitar signal and you can't really avoid it. And Mm -hmm. I kind of embrace having noise in my signal. Yeah. It's part of the character of the instrument. It's part of the character of playing electric guitar is having this noise and this static that you're dealing with. And maybe that's what I was trying to say about ourselves is that we're just more static. We're just more static. I mean, I think we, I mean, think, I think that's a workable theme. Yeah. Uh, I think it's so, at least somewhat accurate. Oh, absolutely. Um, we can't... are just static. I can't think of a better name I would have picked, and I definitely don't regret our name. Do you remember when we picked the name? I don't. I remember it vividly. The only thing I don't like about it, actually, is that um, because of the availability of things or whatever, um, was that um, in a handful of places, it's spelled out 60 cycle hum. And actually, this is a thing that we learned recently, is that certain podcasts... Uh, podcast aggregators they misspelled it they uh it's under well it's not that it's misspelled it's either six zero or it's 60 spelled out yeah so it's 60 spelled out on a handful of podcast aggregators because this Which means someone else did that um manually, well what right? it is is um so podbean our feed is on 60 is spelled out 60 cycle humcast whatever whatever uh dot podbean.com slash feed that's um, very exciting. But it's six zero on the old feed burner account. So okay. somehow the feed burner account does feed up to like the three up to three hundred episodes. And that's why people around episode two hundred and twenty something was when we actually had three hundred episodes. 
Yeah, because of we, things have, like, we have side content. Because of ad weeks and, yeah. and side content and things like that. Like we actually hit 300 episodes a while ago. But as term and f- as far as our co- what I call the core content or the main content, we this is episode two hundred and forty four. Um, so yeah, so I th- you know I think that's interesting. I guess um, cool, cool little tidbit of information. I want to change the name. I like the name. I like the name too. I mean, we've definitely brand our branded ourselves extensively. Mm-hmm. If we changed our name, it'd be like all that work all over again. People know who we are now. Why would why would we change it? Yeah. Too much work. It's too much work. All right. This first ad was sent in by Josh Scott. Josh um, Scott is well a uh, well-known connoisseur of uh, fizzy, barely flavored waters. And uh, is he really? Is he a La- LaCroix boy? He's a he's an LA Crocs boy. LA Crocs. And also a lover of uh, Steely Dan, apparently. Uh, you know, so some- uh, which is the LaCroix of music. He almost, got, I think, got kicked out of the Facebook group because when he joined, people looked at his profile and just saw all of his bicycles <laughs> and thought he was one. He he's thought, the, I think he's in our I think he's in our group and I think he follows us because he does think we are a bicycle group. Yeah. yeah. yeah 60 cycle. Huh? 60 cycle. Which he's is, like, when, going back to the name thing, uh, early on, we got a lot of spam accounts joining the Facebook group trying to sell us bicycle related <laughs> merchandise. Where's all the bike chat? This is six. <laughs> what? 60, where's, where's 60, the, 60 cycle hum. I don't see any cycles in here. Yeah, no, let alone 60 cycles. This hey, should be called zero cycles. Hey, guys, post your cycles. All right, so what do you think about this uh, this electric guitar sent by Josh Scott? My wife is saying, feed yourself and pack the pillows, pack the snacks. We'll see how far we get, guys. All right. Uh, so um, this, this guitar reminds me of the face huggers from the Alien movies. That's much kinder than what I was going to say. It also um, looks like a butt. It does look like a with butt. A, with a weird poop crowning out <laughs> or, of it. Or just like some some like animate, animated testicles. Like this is like a drawing of testicles. <laughs> <laughs> Which I guess would make this center part like I'm going to say it's the perineum. But realistically, this is just a very abstracted dick and balls. Sure. Like this, you, you get this uh, to play in a band with a guy who's got a Wayne caster. Like, like the Wayne caster is a lead guitar, of course, but this is the oh rhythm gosh. guitar. Um, the thing is, like, the, I feel like they were probably going for some kind of like lute ish shape. Yeah. And just failed. I don't know. I feel like you'd have to fail pretty hard to hit this. Like, it's, I, my guess would be a, like they were trying to go for a heart, a heart, but then they realized that the the strap peg wouldn't fit like in the mm. in the gap there. So they're like, oh, we'll put a little thing sticking out here to put the strap button. They're on. like, ooh, barracuda. <laughs> It says beautifully hand person beautifully personally handcrafted for a personal user. There's only one. No copies anywhere. Please make an offer. There's no price. Contact for price. How much would you offer for this? Well, this is. Uh, let's look at the features of this. We got a guitar made out of wood. Yeah. It's is shaped it, like balls. It has a neck. It has a neck. <laughs> um, we haven't seen the headstock at all, have we? We don't. There is know. no picture of the headstock. As far as we know, the headstock looks like a penis head. Um, it's got a single coil pickup in it. Yeah. A stop tail wraparound bridge, volume tone. Uh, you add up all the numbers on that. I might pay. F- uh, upwards of 50 or 75 dollars for this guitar that yeah, looks like balls there's not a lot here there's not that like the novelty of the shape is not exactly clear the craftsmanship might be fine who knows what the neck actually is because you can't see a headstock so you don't know if it came off of something else or this person built this mm-hmm. um if i bought this i would probably be buying it to make it look more like the face huggers from alien right and right. i would be putting little legs sticking out the side oh or gosh. something like that you make it cute with a smiley. Yeah, make it a cute little face hugger. All right. It loves you. Should we should we make this a fast episode so I can rush to the hospital? I don't know. It seems like we're already doing that. We're a off to bit. the races. All right. Uh, this first topic was sent in by Ian Ferguson. He says, "Talk about headphone amps. I work long hours and have a guitar at my desk. I'd love to be able to plug it into something that doesn't suck." Uh, Tony Fellas CD says iPhone plus one of those adapters plus headphones plus amplitude. So basically he's talking about like an iRig. Yeah, yeah. Or something similar. Um, have, did you ever use the iRig that way? Yeah, yeah, I did. Is that pr- pretty good as a my, practice amp? My criticism of that, and it doesn't matter if you listen to it through headphones or anything, like I can feel the lag. 
right in the software when i'm playing mm. through like amplitude even when i'm plugging into my computer and using GarageBand with their onboard like amps and effects and stuff like that i can feel the lag when i'm playing and it's so irritating to me um my experience in general with headphone amps is like it always sounds kind of bad through headphones it doesn't sound the way that you want guitar right. to sound uh and i think that's just the nature of the headphones it's going to sound like a recording of a guitar rather than you actually playing guitar that being said my two favorite headphone amp experiences so far is running headphones out of the katana mm -hmm. which sounded very good to me and the spire i oh, think the okay. spire is a very good headphone experience yeah i feel like there's a couple different the options okay. it's time so i have been texting Bye. you Ryan. We're having a baby. I gotta go. So have fun with the show, Steve. Will do. I think there's a couple options here. Um, I own a Black Star Fly Three, and um, the Black Star Fly Three is like a standalone amp. Um, the nice thing about it is, for when people aren't in your office, like if you're working late, you can unplug it, just plug in your guitar, and you got a little handy speaker there. It's pretty versatile. Um, I haven't been super excited about the headphone out, but maybe that's just my headphones. The other one, and I've talked about it a lot, is the Palmer Pocket Amp. Uh, it's got some different amp options there. Uh, it's a lot of fun. Um, and the upside of it is you can run direct with it. And I use it direct a lot. I think the headphone out is, is okay. Um, I would want a longer headphone cable if I wanted to use it. So that's that. That is headphone amps. Here we go. Cheers. It's me all by myself. No, I don't want a safety camera roll iPad. Thanks. This week's episode is sponsored by Sinusoid Pro Audio Couture. Uh, this week we're talking about the Sinusoid Custom Shop. If you want something a little different than what they might have on their website, maybe a very specific length of cable or something really just off the wall, um, some of the guys have hit them up to do uh, quarter inch, eighth inch snakes where they'll have a quarter inch cable and an eighth inch cable all in a single tech flex sleeve. You can hit them up for that. That's really great if you are running a, a guitar, but are also looking for an option to uh, include a headphone amp. Or not a headphone amp, but something for your in-ear monitors. It's a really great option. Uh, anything that you can think of. They might do like larger snakes, I'm not really sure. You can hit them up, shoot them an email. That's the Sinusoid Custom Shop. They'll get back to you. They'll see what they can do for you. So hit them up. That's sinusoid.com. They make cables and smiles. This next ad was sent to us by Tim Green. Where is it at? Here we go. This is a St. Blues chess theme guitar. It's called the Memphis Edge Custom with Chess Theme. Um, we got this whole website sent to us. It's called the Memphis Edge. It says, when I designed this, gu this guitar, I used knowledge I had learned growing up and eventually working in my father's guitar shop. This one is something I've wanted to do for a long time. Ash slash walnut butcher block pattern with chess pieces as knobs. Turned out really cool, but a lot of work. I won't be doing this again real soon, so get this while you can. It's a solid body, this ash walnut combo, no binding, yada yada yada, a bunch of stuff, Cluson tuning machines, nickel hardware, two DiMarzio PAF Masters humbuckers, uh, push pull master volume. Uh, the thing to look at this is the knobs are custom chess pieces to look for like knobs, there's a, a bishop, a queen, I believe, and a knight. Um, and the thing that Ryan and I were gonna talk about with this is like, what other board games would you want themed? Um, I'm thinking Trouble, a little pop there, a little pop Trouble, get your numbers. The other one that would be like really crazy too is like Boggle. I'm not really sure how practical that is, but you know, if you are a Words with friends slash Scrabble guy like me, like Boggle could be really interesting. Um, a clue themed guitar might be a way to go or Monopoly. Mm, Monopoly would be really colorful. Uh, my Monopoly guitar would probably just be uh, Mediterranean and Baltic because uh, I'm always broke when I play Monopoly. I always, I just always lose. Does anyone actually ever win at Monopoly? I feel like everybody loses because you're just playing forever. Ryan, oh, you're gone. Okay, let's keep going. Um, I don't know what other pieces this would be. Uh, 
the chessboard thing's really done a lot. Usually it's with paint jobs. So to see it in this kind of like butcher block, cutting board format is, is different, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, so that's that. Uh, the case is set up for gig bag. This is a St. Blues guitar. They've been actually, they've been around for a while. This thing's $2,000. I guess it's custom, and if this is really what you're looking for, if you love chess, if you love chessboard theme, uh, then maybe this is a way you want to go. Personally, not really for me. Um, I've seen this kind of blocking before, again, from like just cutting boards. I feel like maybe you could do it yourself. I don't know. Wow, this is going to be a short episode because I'm just going to keep going. Uh, Alex P. Britton... Camp sent in this to the Facebook group. He says, uh, do, do, do if I can find it. Thoughts, feelings, concerns about practice tools like the Digitech Trio, S Drum, Beat Buddy, etc. Gimmicks or valuable tools? The new trio I hear is really good. Ryan has the original trio, and one of the things I thought that was um, bad about it. And we've talked about it before on the show and other people have commented this before is that the, uh, the bass player on the original Digitech Trio tends to like be a little too adventurous, I guess. Uh, if you're using it for guitar practice, you suddenly have this bass player who maybe wants to work outside of the box a little too much instead of just sitting in the pocket. Otherwise, the trio, everyone I know who has a trio really loves it, actually, as like a full band tool. Um, the upside of the Beat Buddy is it's super versatile. Um, you can use it in a lot of ways to do um, two different things. You can program it. You can kind of be like, oh, I want to do a punk song, so it's going to sound like this. I want to do this style or that style. You have a lot more versatility with like your own programming. Um, some people use those live. I don't think the trio is like necessarily useful live, but the trio is probably a little more useful as like an in-house practice tool because you can just take it and plug it in and go. It's got actually a couple like effects in it. I know it at least has a drive kind of thing going on in it. So, um, that's really cool. The S drum, I don't know anything about it. I know it's from Digitech. Ryan was saying earlier, it's this thing where like it strums and it lines up the drummer with your strumming pattern. I guess maybe that's the S drum part. Is it strum drummer? I don't really know. I've never used it. I don't watch videos about this stuff. I probably should. It would probably help me work on my rhythm, but I don't. That's just what it is. So um, if you want to know more about the trio and the beat buddy, we have a ton of videos on this stuff. Ryan made a bunch of videos back in the day about the trio and the Beat Buddy. For a long time, they were our most popular videos until he did the Epiphone SL. But uh, yeah, I know he really liked the trio as a songwriting tool. I know he also liked the Beat Buddy as a songwriting tool because again, he took the time to program it to be like surf style drums. So if you're into needing the versatility of doing your own programming and you wanna dive in, the Beat Buddy's probably a little better. Um, if you just want something that you can play along with and is gonna match so you're playing really easily and has a bass player, then the trio is the way to go. And again, there's like a trio plus now, and I think like a trio version two that are fairly popular. So that's that. Man, we are flying. This is gonna be like a half hour episode. Um, this last one is a guitars with graphics. This was sent by Daniel Police. Um, he sends, uh, there's a couple images. It says two guitars with added graphics, separate $125 each, take both $200. All are unique, one of a kind guitars. Necks and frets are in good condition. Electronics, good shape as well. Being sold with stock pickups. I have a couple of guitars listed as well as a Fender Mustang 300 watt one by 12. If you want to put a few together, I'd be more than willing to listen to some offers. Originally a Fender Squire Strat and an Ibanez GX30. So what's confusing to me about this ad is that the the Squire Strat doesn't have strings on it. The Ibanez GX30 um, doesn't have any hardware on it to speak of. I guess it still has the knobs, has the switch, um, but the uh, the GX30 is cat themed. 
mountain lion themed even. Both of the uh, pieces of art on this pass the playing test that Ryan always talks about in that um, the mountain lion is horizontally aligned. It's going like, Ryan made this whole sound like whatever, but I, I can't do a mountain lion sound very well. Apparently there's a mountain lion in the canyon next to the canyon by my house uh, that freaks people out. Like they're gonna get eaten by it, which is probably a legitimate concern. So all I will say is um, if you live in a place with coyotes or mountain lions or bobcats, uh, make sure you lock up your pets at night. Uh, if you are walking your pets in a canyon where these types of animals exist, keep them on a leash, keep them close to you, carry uh, some kind of animal repellent, pepper spray, whatever. You know, just be safe, be smart. If you are a giant person uh, who runs through those canyons, like me, then I guess you just take your life into your own hands because I don't want to carry pepper spray in my pocket because that stuff's heavy and I don't want to deal with it. So uh, so that's the first one, this Ibanez GX30. Um, on the back of this, there's another mountain lion theme. It's just kind of like crouched, like it's coming to get you. Um, I would not pay $125 for this, but Ryan might because I know he really liked that mountain lion on the front. The Squire has kind of this cast or like mansion on a hill, kind of Scooby-Doo looking thing going on. It's a little spooky. Maybe you whip this out for like a Halloween show. Otherwise, I don't really know what you're doing with this. Would you pay $125 for a hard tail, tail Squire with some weird art on it? I wouldn't. $60 maybe, but not $125. That's crazy. Um, so yeah, that's that, I guess. Um, Ryan's gone. So you only get half of a show here. We're sitting at about 24 minutes, which is actually literally half of a show. That's weird, right? Maybe not. So I guess since I've got a little extra time here, I'm gonna talk about strap locks. Um, somebody wrote in, let me see if I can find it. Um, do. Oh, Joey Jaworski. He says, I've been using DiMarzio clip locks for a long time, but on my newest Jazz Master, I wanted a more unique look. So I got a pattern strapped and I'm using, excuse me, the beer washer style locks. Now I want to do it to the rest of my guitars. Um, so <clears throat> straps I get, I, I actually have a red strap at home. Um, that I haven't used yet. I've been wanting to pull it out. And I actually really like the beer, what they call, now they call the beer style lock. Fender actually sells them directly, which is weird because I think you can buy like packs of a hundred of them off of Amazon. It will give you more strap locks. I mean, literally enough for 50 guitars, right? That's a hundred. You need them in pairs, so 50. Um, I really like those. Uh, I've never used the DiMarzio clip locks. They always just seemed a little weird to me the way they clip on. Um, and I know a lot of people swear by the Dunlop ones and they've all always looked really bulky to me. The other thing I don't like about the Dunlop ones is they always look like they would slip. Um, I've always used the shallower strap lock. I like the way that they fit on. There's not really anything there that can go wrong. Um, that I can figure out, I guess if the plunger jammed, that would be a problem. Um, but the Dunlop ones, I've definitely heard about like the ball bearing seizing and they get stuck. And now it's like, oh, hey, I'm selling this guitar. Uh, this hope you like the strap because you're stuck with it because it won't come off. The uh, again, like the shallower, the shallower ones, I think, look really sharp. Ryan would say that they look too bulky and he's always afraid that he's going to like stab himself in the arm with them or something, something weird like that. I know he's not a big fan of them. Um, but uh, yeah, I've been using the beer style lock on the... Um, the Eastwood Classic 4 base that I have. I really like that. I think I will probably pick some more of those up just to put on any future instruments that I get um, that don't already have uh, strap lock mounts to them. A lot of Fender American guitars for a while came with them. I don't know if that's still the standard practice um, to have those on there. Right now, two of my instruments have them and two of mine don't. Two of mine, the rest of mine don't. Um, so I've been using the mono straps, the, I forget what, uh, it's a mono case strap. I believe it's the Warsaw model, uh, strap. 
Uh, I've been using those. They have a really thick um, strap connection. Like the part that goes over the strap peg is like really thick. So when you have a strap like that too, um, Planet Waves has that on some of their straps where it's a little, it's like really thick and rigid. Like it will, it will hold its shape a lot better once it's on the guitar. Um, if you're always like one of these guys that pulls it on and off and on and off, then I think the beer washer method is probably or, or the way to go. Like that, it's just, just like a silicone or like a foam rubber grommet kind of a deal. Um, that's really the way to go. Otherwise, um, yeah, strap locks. I'm a, like, again, I'm a, I've always been a shallower guy. Ryan is a no strap lock guy. Um, I've dropped too many guitars from having strap locks fall off. And um, that actually got me thinking as I used to do the punk rock thing and just duct tape my straps onto my guitar. If you want a cleaner look, you can use like gaffer tape. I think it comes off a little easier. It doesn't leave as much of a residue. But uh, my jack sting used to be covered in duct tape, like on both the top and bottom pegs until I got strap locks. I just always use duct tape to keep my strap on. Uh, I guess it's super punk rock. I was just a kid and that's what I saw people doing. And so I did it. And when I stopped doing it, I had to use like um, a bunch of WD-40 to dissolve all of the residue that was left on there. So that was weird and kind of gross and it smelled really bad. And I did get it all off. And um, so I guess I, that guitar, my Jack Stang, my MIJ Stratocaster and my Telecaster all have strap lock, uh, shallow strap lock pegs on them. The downside with those pegs is um, and I don't know if the Dunlop has the same problem, but the screws that come with the shallows are kind of shallow. So you either have to dowel the hole uh, using like a toothpick or any other kind of wood dowel um, and in order to put the new screw in, or you just have to use like the other screw. And sometimes the head of the screw won't fit into the hole of the strap lock itself or of the strap lock peg. So you have to modify it a little, it's just a mess. Uh, some guys use like long wood screws, like a one inch wood screw or two inch wood screw to really get it in there. Um, but the screws that come with the shallows are a little thinner than what Fender has normally on their guitars. And that's not a good, that's not a good deal. You don't want that. Cause that's gonna, it'll go in and it will sit, but it will barely sit. Um, and then it will pull out. Like I, I've seen those pull out it's not great. You buy these strap locks because you want your guitar to be solid and you want to have the confidence in it. So if you want that, make sure if you buy shallower strap locks or any use any kind of screw that's a little smaller than what was originally in there that you dowel. Uh, again, I use toothpicks, wood glue, take care of it. You don't even necessarily need to let it set. I'll put toothpicks in there with the wood glue, fill up that hole and then put the screw right in then let it set with the screw in place. That will kind of like solidify the toothpick and the wood glue all around that screw. It's really gonna hold nice and tight. It's the way you wanna do it. Or like I said, um, the whole quote beer gasket or uh, whatever washer works really well. Uh, the running joke is, uh, you know, I went out and bought a six pack of Grolsch and I got three sets of strap locks with it. So. There you go. That's my piece on strap locks. Moving on. All right, this song was sent in by Co Schneider. He says, hey guys, Co here. A while back, Kevin Equits of Equits Guitar came by the studio and we made some noise for a few hours. This little excerpt was taken from that time. Kevin was playing through the sweet guitar licks on a Jennings Voyager through a whole host of pedals, namely the Solid Gold Surfrider and some drivey stuff into the Fender Supersonic 22. I was playing the Equits Devera bass prototype through the pellet. It's just bragging. Oh, I was playing the Equits Devera prototype Ugh. through the Pelican noise work half horse into the Ampeg Micro VR. And there is a weird drum loop in there. I worked up real quick. Hoping we'll have a video out showing these things to you. Signed, Co. Ad Wizard Schneider. He just calls this noodles. I've played the Equits Devera bass prototype. It's super cool. Equits actually just came out with the Ainsley prototype, which is a whole new body shape, really unique. I'm gonna send a link or post a link here to uh, Equits Guitars. Check that out on the footnotes. Um, the new Ainsley, it's on his Instagram, I believe is instagram.com slash Equits Guitars. It looks fan 
freaking tastic. It's white. Uh, I remember asking Kevin why he does so many guitars in white, and he said like if he, if you build a guitar and it doesn't look good in white, then it's not going to work in any color. Which um, I don't know. The more I see him put stuff out in white, the more I understand where he's coming from. So that's super cool. Um, so yeah, I guess uh, I guess that's that. You guys get a super short episode this week. Um, maybe we spice it up with some extra stuff this week. I don't really know what's going to happen. But uh, yeah, that's that. Enjoy this song. It's just a couple guys noodling around. So yeah, that's that. Um, by this time, I guess Ryan will have his baby. Hopefully his wife doesn't murder him on the way to the hospital. No, she would murder him after they get to the hospital so she can have the baby. I guess that makes more sense. Okay, bye.